Welcome gang, and thank you for joining me for this video. In this stumble through, what we'll be doing is deploying Red Hat virtualization, but not just manually as we would traditionally do, but in this instance, we'll be automating the installation process with a kickstart file. So I'm sure you're wondering what a kickstart file is. Well, a kickstart file, simply enough, is just a, a file that describes how you want to install your Red Hat Enterprise Linux-based solutions, like a RHEL or Red Hat Virtualization. Now, when you install RHEL, traditionally you have the anaconda-ks.cfg file that's deposited in the root directory, well, slash root users home directory and that describes what you did during that install so you can take that kickstart file and then ship it over to another rel system that you're installing and automate it very quickly from there based on the previous uh, decisions and configurations that you set during that original install creating a kickstart file for red hat virtualization is a little bit more involved you don't get that sort of quick uh, previous kickstart file that you used from a manual install generated you kind of have to go through the documentation and build your kickstart file yourself uh, thankfully though I've actually pretty much done a little bit of that for you here is a kickstart file it's uh, on github I'll link to it uh, down below but here it's got pretty much all the essentials you need to automate the deployment of Red Hat Virtualization. Red Hat Virtualization 4.4, the latest, greatest version that is just now out. So a few things as we walk through this kickstart file to get you uh, acclimated with what it's doing. First off, it's setting up our uh, temporary file system. This is uh, something that it does as a pre-boot step, so don't really touch this unless Red Hat support instructs you to do so. Next, it's going to define where our installation source is originating from. Now, this can be either just a CD that you're deploying on each hypervisor host. It can be a uh, live image like what I'm going to be using that's just being booted off of the USB stick that has been instantiated earlier. You can also deploy it from an FTP server, an HTTP server, NFS, and a couple other options that are out there available for you as well. These are commented. There's a little extra documentation there to guide you along the way in case you want to choose one of these uh, network installation options. There are a couple other things that you might want to set through here, such as your time zone, your keyboard layout, and the system language if you'd like to switch something up from uh, the basics that I have set up here. Something else you'll likely want to configure is your network parameters. So I'm just doing a very simple installation where we're just going to activate the first network interface card. I've got multiple in there, but we'll configure the rest of that later. But again, you can set this to be static. There are some examples for how to set it up uh, if you have a VLAN tagged interface. And either way, what you'll also want to do is kind of set your host name likely as well. One of the next steps it's going to process through the Kickstart file is authentication. As the default in this Kickstart file, it's going to use local authentication. You can also set up LDAP authentication in case you have Red Hat Identity Management or an Active Directory server you'd like to integrate into this Red Hat virtualization host. But one of the things you'll want to do for sure is generate a new local root password. You can do that in two different ways. If you've got Python 3 installed, just run this command, change out the password here with what you want to set, and it'll generate this big long hash. Alternatively, you can just run this MK password with uh, msha512, and then you'll be prompted for the password you want to set, and then again, it'll generate you this nice long hash. If you want to create an additional user, you can do that here as well, and maybe even set it up as a uh, root sudo user, right? Now, again, this is something you'll definitely want to configure and set up your own hash, because these hashes actually don't work. Uh, they're based off one of my other passwords, but then I deleted a couple of characters and messed it up on purpose, just for my paranoid sanity. Now, 
A few other things that this kickstart file does is it enables cron.ed for time synchronization. It's enabling the cockpit, so the web UI, very useful there, and SSHD. And then we're going to set SSH and the cockpit to be allowed through the firewall. And you can use this example to allow other things through your firewall um, as well. Now, the system I'm deploying to has just a base RAID 1 uh, virtual disk enabled on the system because what we're going to be doing is consuming storage from a network attached storage solution. So what we're going to do is just zero out the master boot record. We're only going to use this first uh, drive that's available there as well. We're going to clear all the partitions and we're also going to automatically partition that local disk within provisioning. Um, you really don't want to mess with the local partitions unless Red Hat support has kind of guided you through what you want to modify. So again, one of the values of Red Hat support isn't just break fix, it's also guidance. So if you want to do this sort of modification, open up a ticket, ask for some help, and they'll guide you through. We'll also want to just kind of agree to the EULA because we all do, I suppose. And at the end, we'll reboot as well. And this kind of makes it a fully automated installation almost. Now, you can set some password policies for your users and your local disk encryption if you'd like. There are a couple of post-provisioning steps that are taken as well. We're going to, uh, in, in, in my lab, I like to disable the meltdown inspector mitigations because that gives me a little extra performance. And since it's not a shared environment, there isn't really much of a risk. If you are in a multi-tenant environment, you probably still want to kind of keep that off and get rid of this line right here. And if you'd like to automatically subscribe to the Red Hat Network and attach a subscription, there are a couple examples for how to do that here. So basically, you're going to want to download this file modify it where you need and make it available for the installation media. So we have installation media. We also are going to have the kickstart file. So it's just these two things that you need. In my example that we're going to show you here, the installation media is going to be a USB key and the kickstart file is available on a different USB key. This again can be available on the network, it can be put on an HTTP server, FTP, NFS, so on and so forth. And if you really want to get this fully automated, that's where you would want to implement something like a Pixie server or deploy Red Hat satellite to fully boot and fully automate the deployment of a Red Hat virtualization host. Either way, we've got this downloaded, we've got it installed, and again, I've got my installation media right here on this tiny little USB key. And then I've got the kickstart file available on another key. So I'm going to go drop this into my server and I'll be back in a second. All right, so now I've got those two USB keys plugged into my server. And what I want to do is boot off of the installation media. All right, now that I've got the installation media available to the server, let's just go ahead and boot off of that. It's this ultra fit disk. Now I'm using something called Ventoy. It's just a multi-boot uh, little piece of software. It's pretty great, actually. If you haven't checked it out, I highly suggest it. It makes it to where you don't have to flash USB drives all the time. Just drop the ISOs on there and it's ready to roll. So I'm going to select this Red Hat Virtualization Host 4.4 ISO, and it's going to load. And we're presented with the traditional installation screen. I'm going to press the up arrow key to highlight install rev 4.4. But before we hit enter, if we just hit enter here, we'll go through the graphical user interface installation and have to set everything manually. But again, we want to automate this process. So instead of pressing enter, let's press tab. And this gives us the boot options that it would normally use. We're going to modify a few things here. Now on my USB key, I have the kickstart file labeled as rev44-ks. We're going to change 
where it's located. You can use, again, a network option. You can define the um, disk itself by the disk uh, address, but I like to use a UUID because that way you get the exact device no matter the naming convention that the system assumes or provides. And you can get the UUID for your USB stick or whatever you're using by attaching it to a Linux server and running uh, BLK ID or block ID. And it'll give you that UUID. And for me, I'm going to use 74E7. So that's my UUID for the device that has this kickstart file. And the last modification we'll want to use uh, in this command is prefixing that KS with INST. So the full uh, kickstart definition in this boot parameter is INST.KS. You're going to target the hard disk. I'm targeting it by the UID and providing the file name. And from this point, we're going to press enter. And here comes the boring stuff, really. Again, the installation from this point is fully automated. All those configuration definitions that we placed in the kickstart file will take place as we install. So it's going to switch the root file system and mount it temporarily. And from here, we'll just see it continue through the install. Um, but it's going to run those pre-configuration steps. It's going to, again, set everything we defined in the kickstart file, run our post-configuration. Right now it's going to disable that uh, meltdown specter mitigation, so I gain a little extra performance. But aside from that, that's, that's pretty much it. We're going to change those boot parameters. We're going to target that kickstart file wherever it is, and it's just going to run. Now, if you don't want to boot the system off of an ISO and then target the kickstart file yourself manually. Again, there are different ways to go about this. Uh, ideally, if you want to have a full end-to-end -end automated solution to provision these Red Hat virtualization hosts, you can do that with Red Hat Satellites, Pixie server. Uh, with doing that, you'll need to modify a little bit of your network configuration and set up a couple things so that it knows where to find that Pixie server and set up its network configuration initially before we even start. Uh, again, that's a little bit more involved with your network and not something everyone can manage. So this is a pretty easy middle ground. If you're interested in seeing that process actually in action, let me know. I'll be more than happy to show you how to deploy a fully automated Red Hat virtualization host coming out of Red Hat Satellite. But either way, again, thank you for joining me. Hopefully this was helpful. If this is useful, uh, let me know. If you want to see something else, I'd be more than happy to uh, demo that as well. But either way, until next time, take care.